Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the Heart Leader Podcast. Uh, I'm Austin, and today is our amazing guest and one of my best, closest brothers, friends, mentors, guides, I mean, you name it, anything. He has been through it all with me, and I'm so, so happy to be here today and just have this chat with him. Uh, Anthony is the founder of the Fit Father and the Fit Mother Projects, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive today into just kind of, honestly, what tends to be our normal conversations. We're just going to kind of... Uh, kind of open the lens and and uh, and share it with you guys today. So, um, yeah, man, happy to have you here today. Happy to be here, bro. I wanted to kind of start off because we started off understanding about each other from from depth, right? I mean, we met in high school, mm-hmm. and one of the first things we actually talked about was kind of our childhood, which mm-hmm. is. You know, even though we were children, more or less at that time, mm-hmm. you know, that's really the only experience we had. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, meeting in our uh, philosophy class, mm-hmm. talking about adoption mm-hmm. for me, but I really got to understand about you and your father. And so I, I was wondering if you might just kind of dive into kind of talking about just giving a little bit of context of where, you know, because this has shaped so much of your life. Totally. Wonderful question. And what I think is amazing, just first on a more meta level, is we're each gifted a unique circumstance that we are born and incarnate into. It has a unique set of factors with our parents. You happen to be adopted. Mm -hmm. My dad happened to have died at a young age. And it just shapes these amazing inflection points and choices that we can make in life and it gives us gives color to what we ultimately may create. So for me, um, I was always a very active kid growing up. I loved playing sports, loved being in my body, spent a t- most of my childhood outside, it seemed like. Um, and at the same time, I was watching my dad totally lose his health. He had mm-hmm. cancer and he battled cancer off and on for like 10 years. Mm-hmm. And so I watched him go through, and it was brain cancer. So I watched him go through multiple brain surgeries, lose control of half of his body, walking with a cane, you know, like just in in ultimately being so immobile and in hospice. And I think from a young age to see that your parent go through that and also to make that kind of like the, what, what I saw with the intensity of all that shaped my perspectives around my health and strength in, in kind of ignited a desire in me to, to get strong to understand how the body works, how to stay healthy, to step up after my dad died from my mom, my little brother. Um, and what was amazing as a young kid, I started exercising like, I don't know, when I was like 11 years old. Like I got a pair of my dad's weights, started to do exercises, keep the dumbbells under the bed. I would pull, pull them out at night, do some exercises, and I started to get stronger. And when I got stronger as a kid, I ultimately excelled at sports and I gained some confidence and it ultimately in high school when you're a boy, we went to an all boys Catholic school. There's no girls. Mm -hmm. So, um, for our, in our, in our instance or in my instance, I should say it was cool to be strong. So I lifted weights. You played sports. You were an amazing golfer. Right. Um, but this, this, this snowballed into a passion for health and fitness, building myself up for sure, discovering my confidence, understanding about research domain and ultimately gaining a skill set that through many twists and turns we can continue to talk about in my life, I've been using to help other people foundationally improve their lives through the medium of losing weight and getting healthy with the body. So I think it's, it's amazing. I feel so appreciative of all the experiences that I've been gifted because they've given me the soil to create what I've created. And in many ways, it doesn't seem like it's even my plan. It's just the plan. It's just mm-hmm. the flow. And I'm now no longer see myself necessarily as like the causative agent actor that is like orchestrating this thing, but more just like this experience is expressing itself through me. And and now it's my job to be with it, be it, love it, strengthen it, uh, allow it to express more expansively and in, 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 in all that stuff. And this is the spiritual work and the two just are one thing now. Um, so it's been an amazing journey so far. It has seeing you evolve. I mean, from the moment we met, man, you've been, you've taught me so much. I mean, I feel like 
I've been in the Anthony Balduzzi program for <laughs> uh, self personal growth and, and self improvement since I was 14. Thanks, man. You know, I'm one of the few people that actually gets to say that in my life, and just to see how much that's moved in 15 years, like yeah. or more. Gosh, we're old. <laughs> um, it's like. I mean, you've made such an impact on my life and to see you every single day getting out there and making an impact on so many lives. Uh, most of the time I'm, I'm speechless, man. It's, and you do it with such love and care and connection. And it's not just a transaction, which is such a rarity these days. And I, and I honestly feel that that's, that's something that you have that very few very few people get to experience and I can, I see why, I mean, that was one of the main reasons that I was so, so connected to you from the very beginning. I mean, it's, it's hard not to be when you care so deeply. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you sharing that. And I think what you just described feels like my experience now. Mm -hmm. And I will say this to tell the truth of my experience. Like it hasn't always been that way. This is what it's, how it's developed into. You know, when I started the Fit Father Project, I started in like my, I started in the, in middle, in medical school. So after I got out, I remember like the first day of medical school orientation was, I don't know, we had to meet at like 8 a.m. or whatnot. I was trying to create a course at the time mm -hmm. and, and I got up at like 5 a.m. to shoot a course in the dark and it was terrible and it never saw the light of day. But like, I just, I share that story because mm -hmm. that's how dedicated I legitimately was going to medical school to want to create this thing. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was, it was really a, a stage in my conscious development of using, being very entrapped in the, in the, in the ego, almost like solar plexus energy of, 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 uh, accomplishment of, of proving to myself that I could do something of very like, uh, like angsty, desirous energy for yeah. this creation and success. Because I, and I think that the, the seed of that though, was this deep inner knowing that this was possible for me and this was like the path to do. But at first, when I started the Fit Father Project, I did not anticipate that this would be affecting hundreds of millions of people through all the content. I was literally trying to sell a $10 ebook. Mm -hmm. Like I was trying to figure out how do I create, get something that I think is good that I feel, you know, even just your own relationship to the stuff you're creating. Like, is this good? You guys have written books. I know you know with the creative process and then learning how to package that and get that out to people and then learn how to communicate in an online space that can get people to stop in their experience and be like, wow, this is, looks amazing. I think this can enhance my life and I'd like to try it out. Mm -hmm. Like that whole process coincided with this massive spiritual awakening that I went through. And what's funny is you said that you learned so much from me and it sounds like that's true. And I'm thank I'm thankful for that, but I didn't know it when we were living together in our early twenties, but like I was yet to learn so much from you. I think it, it was it was fun for me now that I look back because you had what I would call your initial spiritual awakening when I don't know you were in your maybe whatever we were in our early, early mid twenties but you had it many several years before I did I was certainly on a path but you had a very explosive and radical shift in your consciousness and awareness that seeded into intense practice over a number of years and I was living with you during it and I and I hadn't experienced those types of things shifts and awarenesses yet in my life. I, I was watching you become a massively loving person moving out of like your egoic ties as a young stud businessman, you know, traveling, whatever, whatever that was for you that you were creating, you were making these shifts. And I was driven by this, this angsty, but good energy to, to create and actualize what, what, what I thought my ego wanted. And I was strengthening this. And little did I know many years later that I would then come to follow your path that at the time I didn't, I, I, I loved you for it because this was your experience, but I didn't fully understand. But now I understand, like through my direct experience and truth. And like, that's been really cool. Like it's been a, it's been a very humbling thing for me too, to like be with you through that. And I think it's a privilege to have a friendship that we have where we've been friends for so long because length of experience is like, there's something to that because you almost feel like someone's known what your expression or your essence is at many different like snapshots of, of progression. And then on top of that, to have someone who understands 
what I call these deep truths about our, our, our reality. Um, and to be able to share that with you on a deep level now is like such a privilege because you don't get many opportunities like that. At least as people say that, my life feels abundantly filled with those, but I know what we have is special. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Definitely. I really appreciate that. And I, of course, feelings mutual, man. It's, uh, it's rare that you get to truly connect with people on a, on a heart basis. And, and we get to do that through, we've gotten to do that through multiple stages in our lives. Usually it's maybe one, maybe two at the most. Yeah, but the point. fact that we've, I feel like together we've lived multiple lives. It's almost three or four different lives, right? I'd say, if you really were just slice up the essence of those different stages. Definitely. One, two, three. We're on the fourth, as I would say. I agree. I agree. And this, this month's theme that we're talking about is all about authenticity. And that's one thing I can share for you that I've always looked up to you on. I mean, you've, you've been the pillar of authenticity. You've exactly. always been exactly who you are. Yeah. And you've done that so much to, to be that for the people around you, but not to let that define you. And that's such a, that's such a key many times overlooked aspect of authenticity. Yeah. I see what you're saying for sure. You know, Amber and I, um, in our last conversation, were really sharing how we get lost being attempting to be everything for everyone. Mm -hmm. And that was one thing I, I feel like I learned immensely from you is how to be authentic. Every time we were together, anytime we had a conversation, every time that we, we really just, it was like everything else fell away mm -hmm. and I got to actually be myself and I truly felt accepted for who I am. Mm -hmm. And I, I had yet to ever meet anyone who really saw me for who I am. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it took me years to really actually accept me for me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's part of that stage that you're talking about. We had to get through that. Yeah. But to be in a place now uh, where we can both know each other for who we are and see each other like that's a gift that i i hope everyone gets to gets mm -hmm. to experience I really do i agree brother yeah to have a relationship where you're really seen and is mutual and there's just the basis of real love and a lot of time and experience it's an amazing thing it is yeah and i think it's like probably one of the most amazing things that you could experience, right? Your your communion with another being mm -hmm. at like a pure and deep like level. Yeah. And I think it, obviously it's part of our work here to clean up anything that we feel like in our house of consciousness and awareness needs mending or healing and then to be with others more fully out of love. It's like that. that to me seems like part of this evolution for us. And um, if we can model it with two, you can scale it to many. And that's obviously what I think is also happening right now. <laughs> right. Yeah, Definitely. And I've always loved the way that you position things because you take complex things that are difficult when you look at the whole picture, but you're able to make it so simple. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is a sign of an expert when you're able to take complex things, make it very, very simple. And you've always done that. Mm -hmm. And it's funny as I'm, as I'm looking back and kind of reminiscing as we're talking right now, you know, it started off about the body, about, mm -hmm. you know, was, even then you were, you were showing me how to shed what I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, through the food or like, you know, Hey, awesome. You shouldn't be having that Dr. Pepper right mm -hmm. now. Or, you know, you shouldn't be having this food, you know, really, really think about this. You know, what are you putting into your body? You started having me ask those questions to myself when a time that no one else would. And every, 
the evolution of that over the years has adjusted. It's gone from that body yeah. into the mind, mm -hmm. and then from the mind into the emotion, and yeah. then from the emotion into yeah. now. I feel like uh, you know, in our Let's four, see, we're heart. really into the heart and our yeah. soul, heart and soul for sure. And it's just, yeah. and still to this day, you have that same approach where you're able to take those complex things, make them simple, and then help me ask those questions that I need to ask myself. Thanks, man. Yeah, that's powerful. I, well said, <laughs> for sure. And I, I do, and I do, I do appreciate that and hear that. I, I think we are all, we're all given unique, and I use the word mind here is in terms of like capacities, predispositions of anyone's individual intellect. Although the mind is much more vast than just the intellect, but mind, mind, the personality and whatever I have is is able to to still cut things down and make them more simple in presentation. And I think that's huge for teaching because the, the complication is, is, is the complication can make it more challenging to get to the heart of the matter. And there's the ways of describing things are many, like the core truths are few. Like we can measure and, and describe things in many different ways, but I think you get to the truth of things, things are actually fairly simple. I think that seems the way it is with, with the spiritual truths that I've uncovered. And then if you find a way to also mirror that same idea in these different domains, like with even with your teachings around nutrition or movement or any of these more practical things you're able to give people, if it's based on this congruent aspect of simple truth, it's effective and it's, and it's well received. I, I look into the world right now that we, we have, it's like we're just so inundated, inundated by information and like in stimulation. And I think it's very easy for many people to get distracted, sucked in, identified with, with and attached to different things that, like you said, aren't necessarily who we are at our core. And this process of spiritual awakening is often cutting back ties and clean, I use the word cleaning, but like whatever it ends up being, but like releasing attachments to things and coming more to the heart of our, our own being. Mm. I, the reason I bring this up is because, uh, you know, Paige and I are pregnant, right? I'm going to have a, we're going to have a baby daughter and it's such a beautiful thing to know she's coming in a couple months. And I also am very much can look at the, the world and the environment that she's coming into and the kind of skills and, and, and guidance and parenting and, and teaching that can be done to help her most thrive in a, in, a, in a world that's completely different than if you were growing up in the 1970s or the 80s or the 90s as you know, we did. It's, very, it's an amazing point. This is where I feel in many ways Authenticity has been kind of a North Star for you. Mm. That's something that has never changed. I mean, in in so many ways, you've made, you've evolved as a human over the years. And it's been a, such a gift to be in witness of that. But the core beingness of Anthony, that authenticity has been with you since the day we met. I'm so excited that your daughter gets to experience this, mm -hmm. to see what it is to be fully authentic mm -hmm. from the very beginning. And you're right. There are, there's a lot going on in this world that's yeah. so different right now. And so there's so many distractions. Many people say this is some of the worst times that humanity has ever had. There's always two sides to everything, right? Yeah. And the fact that, your beautiful daughter gets to be in witness of true authenticity from the very beginning is a gift that I don't feel very human, very many humans have ever had a chance to have. Nice. Yeah. I'm excited and I'm excited to see how her being expresses. I'm very curious to see how much shaping my wife and I page do with our authentic being and expression and choices with with our daughter's just innate expression of what she's effectively bringing into her table through her like her soul essence. I don't know if you're able to really parse that apart, but 
mm-hmm. it's going to be very interesting, man. I'm really excited to meet her. I mean, and, I, and truly too, I, I do feel like it's actually a part of the progression of um, the stages of my life and development as, as, as the experience I'm kind of calling forth and in, in being as like, I run the fit father project, right? I'm about to be a father. <laughs> like, um, and I think that's, an exciting time and in, in something that will continue to, to interweave this powerful mesh of me trying to use my, my time, my experience to share stuff to help others. Like it's just going to take that to the next level. And that's awesome. It's like, it's not, it's not just awesome. It's like, what is to come? It's just kind of like the path. And it feels good. And it's like, it's, it feels emotionally good. It feels like super expansive, very grateful. And I, and I come to think right now in this moment, I'm already shocked how many people we've helped and it's already so humbled, but like we are just getting started and it's going to be so cool to see what, if however long the sense of going, but imagine if I put another like 30 professional years of like working with the sole aim of like building communities of people that are elevating one another and get like getting healthier. Come on now. Like it's crazy. Like the math on like the math and the multiplicative effects of that are just really good. And what I've really been called to understand is like this. I maybe we'll even talk about the idea of heart leader. I think a heart leader, a leader is one that is helping to guide others and bring forth the best in them for a common aim of, of, of mutual success and, and under based on the feeling of love. It's a complicated definition, but what I'm trying to say is it's, we're here to build communities and to be with one another and to share our authentic expression and, and to, to have many people come together. And I think that's the only way this world changes too now is if we have more people become heart leaders in whatever slice of this experience they are, they are of and creating. And we all do that. And even a small fraction of us do that. Like the, the, the change that can happen is immense. Like in 2022, what one person can do through will, love, intention, and technology is really is amazing. It is. Those are beautiful words, man. As you were even sharing that definition of heart leader, and I really appreciate you sharing that perspective. It almost really made me feel like what we were talking about earlier in our conversation about you know, taking that definition and seeing, you know, is that not just seeing each other yeah. for who we are? Yeah. But it's seeing each right. other who we are, but also stepping into our own strength. It has this element of like, of that too. Yes. It's the seeing is the connection. And that's for the connection in like the authentic connection. The user was authentic. But the leader is almost like owning your own power at the same time. Because that unique power that we all have is that which we are to like bring forth and share mm-hmm. with express and that default without us doing anything other than just being ourselves in that power and strength is affecting positive vibes and change with, with everything that we come in contact with. So you could be our leader at the, at the helm of like a huge company. Mm-hmm. You can be a heart leader as a parent with a couple kids, you know, you can be a heart leader taking care of, your older parents who are, you know, on the last little bit of their lives. It's like any situation, it's just a way of being right. But I think the strength plus the connection is, is seems like there. And I use the word strength, but it's just, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. One of the things I've always admired about how you approach authenticity is for you, as someone who you approach life very much from the inside out, but you're very good. And I think this is where people struggle 
you're very good at being aware and observing of what's around you, taking in the information, and then making a choice from that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm at a point where I can truly understand that. But I, honestly, as I look back, I feel like you've been doing that since we were kids. Mm-hmm. And that's such a that's truly a gift in the way that you approach it. And Amber and I were chatting a little bit about how it can be confusing for people to, to learn how to take in information from outside of self and not make it be their identity. Mm. There's not attachment mm-hmm. to you. That's what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are some of the things that if you're willing to share, just kind of diving into that, like what are some of the things that you use that really could help someone and I'm honestly asking you as a brother here too. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, there's always room for improvement on my end. Mm-hmm. I want to answer, and, I, and like, and, and can we throw out an example too? Because I think it'll yeah. help me illustrate. Absolutely. So we're really talking about then how is one able to experience without creating attachments to things? But how is it one able to, ex- to experience and navigate? life in the ever-changing now and whatever that is called forth with like with grace and with effectiveness without getting tangled up in what in spirit many spiritual traditions they called karma or like attachments bondages or actions that are creating ripples of back is that the question effectively yeah absolutely well i think the real truth is I created that kind of stuff for most of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think that like in, like in, in, in the suffering and ripples that came from that are like purifying because you're able to be with whatever you create and the, all the attachments, the stuff that creates those little pains in your ego, your identity, you don't feel good enough or like or whatever, whatever those things that you have attached to, like when you're able to begin this spiritual process of, First starts is like, you know, I don't know how it happens for everyone instantly, but you wake up and you realize that you are, you are not those attachments, but there are these attachments that have been made in past impressions that can be kind of like strong and need to be healed and released. It's a dedication to the way to burn those attachments is effectively being loving presence, like being in the heart of, of, of your awareness and your goodness and your authentic expression, like the center of your being, the kind of place you can find in deep meditation, deep prayer, like the, the place that you may even practice going to and, and it, 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 experiencing that, the stillness in the center of your being that is like loving and, and, and deep. Like the practice of doing those meditative things every day is good because it can cultivate this that experience is more easily created in every day and then it's a practice it's almost like both this life experience is following the thread of our authentic desire as it takes us on this adventure one and then two cultivating along the way this loving presence that is able to be with whatever comes up and heal it and I think a couple things that are very practical is to start always telling the truth to like to, to start always telling the truth so that you can base your expressions on what you what you experience is true. So no more deception and creation of language. And and if it does come, lots of daily forgiveness and in in re in course correction. Mm-hmm. You know, I think like the spiritual and this is funny what it says, the spiritual the spiritual path that we're walking to raise our consciousness and more fully experience the beauty and all like whatever doesn't need to be put on the words is so much like the path of of being healthy and in like managing and nutrition and exercise sleep routine that keeps your body healthy and that it requires energy management and and like oftentimes these gentle 
course corrections until like these movements and these drifts become just your way of being like you become in that in that sense more perfect and yeah man it's a path i think i still probably create some ripples here or there um but it's it's really been shockingly amazing how i can experience what my state of mind and awareness and consciousness was like maybe five years ago to now in a very short period of time, maybe even two, three years to now, like, man, the amount of possibilities of, of this stuff is just profound. And I also have the humility to know that what I'm experiencing right now is awareness is only one possibility of even deeper, amazing things. So true, man. I love that you brought up briefly the word perfection mm -hmm. as someone who dedicated most of their youth into creating an image, a physical image of perfection. Yeah. Um, you know, it's hard not to get lost in that, especially from the weight yeah. of perfection. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, yet, you're here even 10, 15 years later, not consumed by that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you feel helped you maneuver that path? And yeah. make it so you didn't fall into that because it's such an easy thing. Yeah. The desire to chase some ideal of perfection and then to perhaps judge yourself as shortcomings or others based on this kind of ideal. Well, again, I think the real answer is especially because I was, I did competitive bodybuilding probably from the time I was about 18, 19 to when I was about 25. Hmm. And I, so it was seven years, but also like I competed around average of two to five times per year. So I did a phenomenal number of bodybuilding shows and was upset, but I was really obsessed with it for decades. And it's an interesting, I did chase ideals and with a physical body. And I think part of it that, that helped is one, I think in, in some way, the, the desire for an ideal is not a completely like pathological. It's like, it's not like, there's not like a bad thing. It's, there's an innate aspect of us that knows that we can improve and has some kind of desire to move into this area. It's when the ego creates this, um, you know, this image of like, of, of what that is an attachment that there is suffering. And I think, again, it comes back to in my, in my understanding experience, like when we, when we suffer from our, from bringing in the experience of self judgment, in that gap of whatever that perfection is, that's a course correcting mechanism in our awareness. Like it's like the suffering is, is a way back to your heart of relaxation and love. Yet what I'll say this is like, we help so many of our clients who are far from wanting to create physical perfection, but they've gotten to a place where they've lost connection with the body or just feel like they don't care. You know, I'm 50, I'm 80 pounds overweight. I'm on medications. I'm on the back out. Like these people, almost every single time and i would probably say every single time experience a spiritual awakening as they get their bodies healthier because it we are, it, it's it seems to me that our bodies are meant to be flourishing in a certain degree of energy health well-being and, and at least to the point where we feel aligned and comfortable in our own bodies that we've don't we don't feel like there's some kind of like have a sense of a, a deficit or a desire to do more like there's congruence in the physical body and like what the mental emotional being of, of someone feels that they want to create and manifest. And so bringing people into the center point, a thing that helped me too is realizing that man on the physical perfection bodies thing, there's always someone with a better body. Like, and, and, and it was for me as a bodybuilder, like losing shows, winning shows, whatever, like that, that was helpful. But I, I mean, another profound experience on the physical domain was getting in that when we were living together, getting in that terrible ski accident. You know, I almost like lost my leg, man. I exploded it into pieces, hitting a tree at about 40 miles per hour, right? Yeah. Five surgeries on the leg, crazy. That that experience of kind of breaking down the body, 
awoke me to um, expanded my consciousness beyond you know merely the attachment to body consciousness. But like, is this not the experience of 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 of, of the human experience that we? Many of us, as we're growing up, we, we, we start to crystallize into more body consciousness. We get interested in, in, in sexual partners. We're, we care about how we, we have this instinct to care about how we look and how others look. And then we play that thing out through, through expression. And then, and then we settle into however all those energies help us expand, either keep us in suffering or, or we move into more love. Um, part of it, I suppose, is ultimately loving what is in your life. Like, be creating and not in the practice of not resisting whatever is in your life. All the spiritual work is just manifested on all the different planes, whether it's the physical, very body plane or the mental, emotional planes, et cetera. Yeah. I like that. I mean, part of scale is simplicity. Yeah. It's really hard to scale complexity. Yeah. And so when we can really view things from that simple approach that you're just talking about, mm -hmm. And that's why I feel like authenticity is such a great fundamental core yeah. for us to pull simplicity from. Yeah. Because, you know, the idea of perfection, you know, what, what, if you were to say, you know, Hey, Austin, what does, what does perfection look like? Yeah. And I'll say, Hey, Anthony, what does perfection look yeah. like to you? We'd have different answers. Yeah. Which is odd considering yeah. perfection is supposed to be the pinnacle. You'd think, yeah. wouldn't that be the same? Yeah. And, and so it's, it's, this is where that misunderstanding of per perfection mm -hmm. causes such a, you know, how it keeps us feeling like we have that weight on top of us mm -hmm. and it's like debilitating. And it's because we're attempting to reach something that doesn't actually exist because it's too fluid. Yeah. You know, where authenticity is, is concrete. Yeah. And it is something that is no longer outside of ourselves. It's, it's actually deep being. within. Yeah. Well, how about we posit this, right? I mean, agreed, hundred percent. The idea of perfection is an external ideal. Yeah. Like, is it not perfect to be expressing you, like exactly as you are? But like, is this whole experience not perfect in the sense that it's every now moment is the exact combination of the isness that is leading us forward to expansion, choice, everything. Like, even the things that we create that seem to bring us suffering or pain or the things that we feel like we didn't even create that are entering into our lives are all weaving this perfect tapestry of our unfoldment. Like it's all our unique unfoldment. So you could say by that thing that the only thing that's perfect, there's no external ideal that this is perfect circumscribed. Everything is perfect in that sense. Like, and this is, this is truly the perspective that I have, like that every moment is perfect for all of us kind of in spite of what's happening because it's just it's it's the expression of exactly what is and and that's leading us into an experience that will lead us into more experience into our exact unfoldment and certain paths have more intensity certain have more sweetness certain have more sadness but it's like that's the unique fingerprint that's happening in this exact conscious beings expression and we can look at these truths from many different relative planes. Um, but yeah, I agree. I, in many ways I say that like authentic, your, your true authentic expression is perfection. It's not a destination. It's like a way of, it's just being. Right. It's yeah. a process, not a it's result. It's a process. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then I think the idea of perfection, if anything, I, I do, it, this, this does seem really true to me. It's like, if you're, if your awareness is this the consciousness itself is like a, this is temple of illumination it's all experience and at our core of our beings we feel if we feel that there are still things to be healed or to be done like it's like it's more it's the experience to be had it's something that comes up as desire or desire for forward movement or desire for forgiveness or desire for healing like whatever those things are doing more of that like the bringing forth of what that is is a part of perfection. I think it's like almost like the seeds of our experience that we have and we're bringing forth here are the seeds of our perfection because we're creating it. And it's like, it's exactly on our path. 
you know, like the opportunity for infinite expansion is the perfection. Yeah. But I also think, yeah, but there's just stuff that's uniquely signature fingerprinted to you versus me. Yeah. Based on all the creation you've done in the past, all the things that have aligned when, where this cosmos was at when you were born, like, or incarnated here. You know what I mean? Like all that. Yeah. And it's all, imagine this and all that's happening and it's all like infinite, intelligent, loving energy, like creating this entire experience with us as beings all happening. Like it's, it's absolutely amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. Well, then, what else is there? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Now as someone who is arguably one of the most dedicated people I've ever met in my life. When you, when you set your mind to something, you go all in. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is a unique time of the year because it does, it is a reflection point, mm -hmm. you know, even though, you know, as we you know, talk about time is, mm -hmm. is made up anyways and mm -hmm. calendars and all that, but it is something that we all, you know, this calendar year is something that we all agree upon and, mm -hmm. and this kind of helps us reset you know mentally emotionally physically spiritually mm -hmm. so in this time where people are taking the time to actually reflect to step back and say hey who do i desire to be yeah you know who who am i actually and how can i how can i manifest this into the world you know, what might be some of the practical things uh even if it's just an approach mm -hmm to help someone as they set their intentions, they set their goals, mm -hmm. no matter whether this is fitness, whether this is yeah. a mental strength, whether this is emotional catharsis, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, what, or, or even just spiritual yeah. uh, awakening or remembrance, whatever you want yeah. to place it. You know. Yeah, I understand the question. Yeah. First off, I think the first phase of, of this process is what you described. It's asking those questions that evoke the the vision or the desire of what you want to create. What do I, it's these simple questions. Like, are there areas of my life right now that I feel called to create something new and different, be more, fix, whatever language may come around that. Like, where are those focus areas? Cool, figure those out. And we know them, you know, they're the things that are kind of nagging on our heart to like, to want to do more and lean into Like it's the core of our, our being. Like it's not something we necessarily need to think too hard about, but sometimes we may. And, and then translating the connecting with that. And the second step I would say is connecting your feeling to that, like really being able to feel into what happens and what, what is experience like when that is created. And this is like connecting this powerful emotive center that we have to this vision of what we may create. And you're in, in many ways, you get as simple as saying you're connecting the mind and the heart into these two things. And now you have a team that can go. But that team needs to manifest in the, the physical world. And this is largely... Uh, one one way to do it as effective prayer is is daily action like action in the direction of this mind heart's creation is the prayer that brings that forward it's aligned intention in action and so then it begs the question and this is the ultimate question with whatever you want to create in life how do you consistently take actions every day in some way that is moving you in the direction of this because like life on this planet is organized very structured <laughs> we have a sun and a moon and earth and it creates length of days and there's rhythm to it and so like every day we get up we have this slate of experience that can be used with conscious intention to create and then as we're doing this, there's also all the other things in our lives, our families, some of the responsibilities and connections that we have into society, like paying the bills, like whatever that stuff is that keeps on rolling. And so the way to create things is to get good 
at the habits and the practices of consistent daily action and managing momentum, managing energy, managing energy and motion. Mm-hmm. Like, and let's talk particularly about fitness. To get healthy, if you have an entire year, the way to get healthy is not to go hard in the paint for 60 days and then to the next 300 days do nothing because that was too intense, didn't fit, didn't work out. But if you could have 300 days you were healthy, 60 days that were not as quote unquote optimal on the plan, and those were sprinkled out throughout the year with energy and momentum managed in a particular direction, that is a very, very different energetic flow than start stop. And so because of just the nature of our, our largely busy connected lives, we need to be strategic about our schedules, the times we get things done and getting very clear and focused on like the written down goals and actions that align with this creation vision. A couple of practical things. I mean, if you're looking to create something and be more dedicated to your goals, at least once a day, maybe even morning and evening would be to sit, sit down in a meditative position with a straight spine and to get to practice some, some meditation to uh, make the mind one pointed. And then also to spend a little bit of the time in that state to feel into what you want to create. The reason I think that's a good practice at the, the tail ends of your days is that it, a little anchor it creates a little anchor of like more awareness and a power, more powerful conscious energy that you carry throughout the action part of your day. And then during the day, it's kind of simple. You, you've written down, you've written down on a piece of paper, like, the five to 10 things that are important to get done during that week. And you're finding the time to check the boxes and you're just moving action forward. Um, And now that is, it sounds like almost simple and trite to describe that because is that not like what we do every single day of our lives? But I think that's really how it happens. Like things, things will happen serendipitously where, You'll be looking for something and you'll get that exact email or that exact call or that exact introduction where all this is moving in alignment. It's not all done off the backbone of your exact hand effort, but that hand effort is a part of this, of this prayer and motion forward for this. And I suppose the other thing is like you have to set aside expectations of time set aside expectations of necessarily how fast things happen and be authentically in the flow of creation and allow it to happen whenever it does. Like, and it's not to say don't set goals because I think they are goals as destinations and like as, as checkpoints and container structures are, are like can be very good. Um, yeah, I'll pause there, but like, I think that's, those, those are some things I definitely think are important on that front. So those are amazing. A written journal, like physical written journal, I think is like a really practical tool where someone has like a to-do list, a little recap reflection stuff like that. These are like the tools that help us manage this momentum and our productive momentum energy. So it's like we have creative energy in us, like this Jing energy Mm -hmm. that they may say in like Chinese medicine. And like, how can we make sure we're channeling that in the productive way and not allowing it to be dissipated and fizzled out by other things? But we also not ruthlessly focus on this, the, the ignorance of all of this, like integrated. Yeah. It's going to help a lot of people, man. I really appreciate you providing that perspective. And it seems to, um, as we're kind of wrapping up here, I do, I do want to hit on one thing, even if it's just kind of one last little spiritual nugget from you. Um, and that's really... Just a, I'd love to dive a quick deep dive into what you feel the connection is between the present moment and understanding your authenticity. Mm. Well, everything in the present moment, you could say a couple things. One, you could say that as you sit in a state of deep meditation, and you allow the activity of the mind to quiet down and fall back, and you sink deeper into your experience of the heart of your being, what you experience there is pure presence in being, uncolored by the 
maybe the attachments, ideas, and activity of the mind that we normally experience in this particular engaged state of consciousness. So like in many ways, you could say that the present is your authentic being. You could look at it that way. Another way is that by, by experiencing when we feel like we're present and the mind is not thinking about like time or, or, or anything other than like what exactly is and you're, you're, you're flowing with the experience of being with what is lovingly, you are bringing forth the best or the highest expression of, of, of what you have. And what this what this is, and that means also like meeting meeting all moments in, in in like without judgment of if things should be this way or should not be this way. Like I mean, I think it also means exception of the uh, accept, accepting of the gamut of different types of experiences these could be. You know, loss of loss of uh, the death and passing of a loved one, tragic accidents to some people, perceived injustice in the world, like. All of that, like even just sitting with the own, the things that we may perceive as judgments or labels, like the present moment gives us in our awareness the ability to examine all these different things that we're connecting to and making relationship with in our minds and our hearts. And so in that moment, like the present is the great teacher, like there's no teacher other than like through every unfolding experience. Um, yeah, and it just feels good. Right. I mean, I don't know. Like it's, it's like definitely the way to live. <laughs> All said, those are beautiful words, man. I really appreciate you as you always do sharing your authentic self, providing practical wisdom, even just the little nuggets of aligning thoughts and emotions with your actions and showing something like a journal that can mm -hmm. be a great way to bring those intentions forward. Mm -hmm. Um, as always, brother, this has been such a pleasure to be able to dive in and share in this way. And uh, thank you so much for your time, for all that you do for so, so many people. Uh, I know because you've impacted my life uh, more than words can honestly ever say, man. You really have. And I'm, I'm grateful that I get to be one of those people among the millions others around the world that can say the same about what you do. Thank you, bro. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for sharing your present <laughs> moment with us. Yeah. Thank you, bro. I love you. And, I, love uh, you. I love you so much, man. I love you too. Um, oh man, just need a moment. <laughs> uh, this has been such an incredible incredible conversation. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, yeah, if you get a chance, please, please check out uh, the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project. Uh, this is something that has been incredible. The communities are amazing and truly life-changing. All the links to everything that uh, Anthony has created and, uh, and is just all below. So if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to comment, share, uh, and, uh, and really check out what the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project are doing. And, uh, and by the way, this month, uh, our authenticity journal is completely free. Um, so we are focusing on the journal this month is the intention setting journal. So go ahead and download that and let us know how it goes. Um, thank you again, brother. Much love to everyone. Thanks. And, uh, we'll see you soon.